Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we will be discussing one of the more controversial figures in the Sharks system. And for anyone who's really been following any sort of Sharks related news of the past week and to a lesser extent this past year, you'd likely know who I'm talking about. And that is, of course, uh, first round pick from 2018, Ryan Merkley. Now, 2018, of course, being not the draft that happened just a couple months ago, but the previous year's draft, the one that had Rasmus Dahlin as the first overall pick. And in fact, even though Merkley was drafted at 21st overall, many draft pundits said that Merkley could have, could potentially be the second most skilled defenseman from that draft, of course, after Dahlin. And in a draft filled with players like Evan Bouchard and uh, Quinn Hughes all in the top 10, it's, it's certainly impressive that the Sharks managed to land Merkley at 21st. Well, how exactly did that happen? Was that the other team's incompet- incompetence? Well, not really, because while Merkley may be one of the most skilled defensemen available in that draft, he was also one of the more controversial, as I said, because of his attitude issues and also his defensive play. So in the OHL, Merkley was one of the best defensemen, if not even the best defenseman in the entire NHL this past season offensively. But he, you could also go on the other side and say he was one of the worst OHL defensemen defensively. As it's not necessarily that his F, when he's putting in the effort to play defensively, he's that bad. He's okay. He's nothing special. But I, you could tell the size maybe does hamper him a bit. But again, it's not horrible. But it's the fact that his effort defensively is sorely lacking. There are so many times where he seems just gives up on the play, doesn't even seem to make much of an effort to get back defensively, let's say after an aggressive pinch forward, or maybe to follow an offensive player in his own zone. He sort of just lets the play happen so that he can immediately get back to the offensive side of the game. It's almost like he has a winger's mentality, but he is a defenseman. And so he was actually on a lot of teams do not draft list partially for that reason, but also because of his attitude issues. And while these are a lot more rumors style compared to his defensive game, which can be observed, it, it is still a real fact. I mean, there are a couple things that you can see him yelling at his coach and all of that and some retaliatory penalties on the ice. But I think one of the main pieces of evidence that would go against Ryan Merkley when it comes to his attitude is what occurred in the OHL this past season on his team, the Guelph Storm. So now the Storm were doing pretty well during the regular season, but they surprised everybody actually by trading Ryan Merkley to the Peterborough Peets and normally when you trade who is potentially your best defenseman and you could even argue best player on the team your team that's looking to try and rebuild that season for instance the Ottawa Senators traded Eric Carlson at the beginning of last year they did then not they didn't then make the playoffs or attempt to make the playoffs they basically took the hit and came basic last place in the league and yet the Guelph Storm after having traded Ryan Merkley again one of their best players just turned around and acquired Nick Suzuki one of the OHL's best players and then ended up making a run in the playoffs and making it to the Memorial Cup so it didn't seem so much that the Guelph Storm were throwing in the tower and towel and deciding to rebuild with the trade of Ryan Merkley but it seemed as though instead they wanted to compete for the Memorial Cup and they felt as though they couldn't do that with Ryan Merkley, which is certainly telling of the relationship, I guess you could say, Merkley had with his coaches and with his fellow teammates. Merkley then ended up on the Peets, as I said. He had a mediocre end to the season. He made it to the playoffs. They were ousted in the first round rather handedly, and now there are a lot of rumors. First of all, it was said that Merkley is not going to be attending the Peterborough Peets camp. Then it came out that the reason that's the case is because he's with the Sharks. Then it coming out that the Peterborough Peets really just didn't want him at their camp. And the fact that he's with the Sharks is sort of like an excuse. And the fact that the Peets are uh, trying to shop him around, trying to trade him. Some are even saying that the other OHL teams would be insane to try and acquire Ryan Merkley with all the history he has in the OHL currently and so it's certainly not some good publicity that Ryan Merkley is getting I guess the good news would be is that when Merkley did play the few games he did with the Barracuda this past season at the end of his OHL year he played about five games and while he didn't get any points and he was a minus player you could tell that the effort was there it didn't look like it was completely lacking like it does at times during the OHL so you can tell that maybe he's taking the AHL a bit seriously a bit more seriously than he takes the OHL but it's certainly not a great attitude to have in that regard 
And considering the fact that, uh, again, he's unlikely to make the San Jose Sharks this next season, I suspect the six defensemen for the Sharks are mostly set, Bern Schemek, uh, Vlasic, Carlson, Heed, and Dylan. Merkley will basically be forced to head back to juniors, of course, if the Peets accept him, because there is a rule that if the Peets cannot find a trade partner and they really don't want Merkley on the team, they could cut him, at which point the Sharks would be allowed to bring him up to the AHL team. But otherwise, if the Peets can't find a trade partner, but they decide to still keep Merkley, he will return to the OHL. And I think it's going to be imperative for Merkley to actually show some sort of progression in his game in the OHL. He's going to be one of the older players. He's going to be in that upper age bracket, only below the overagers and it will basically do nothing for his career to have yet another fantastic offensive season with subpar defensive play it just won't do much of anything the Sharks will not be impressed if he just randomly puts up another 70 or 80 points and says hey guys look at that I'm great offensively you need to show some sort of progression some use this last junior season now that you're just inherently more skilled than basically all the other players and you're more physically developed than all the other players who are 16 and 17 years old and you have to try and develop develop the facets of your game that aren't as developed as your offensive side and I thought Merkley would be doing that you know in the year after his draft year now that he was already drafted in the first round but it didn't seem to be the case and so hopefully if Merkley does indeed return to juniors which again is technically possible he does not that he does try to humble himself put up the effort even in games that seem lost even in games that seem guaranteed won you need to try and put up that consistent effort improve the defensive game and and get a better attitude off the ice because even if it did seem better with the Sharks it is still important what you do at the junior level the, the Sharks actually have an open spot for Merkley as soon as this year in fact he could in theory leapfrog uh, Tim Heed for that third pairing defensive spot as a right-handed defenseman it likely won't happen but Ryan Merkley's spot on the team is wide open it is possible if he can improve his game that he could be here let's say not this coming season but the season after that However, with all this drama and with all of this, you know, uh, talk about Merkley and the lack of progression he has made this past season, while Merkley is likely the Sharks' most skilled prospect at the moment, he would probably there were probably a couple of other Sharks prospects who I'd be less surprised to see make the Sharks within the next couple of years than Merkley, because as it was said when he was drafted, he's definitely an all-or-nothing prospect, and at times this season, and especially right now, it seems as though the Sharks are headed towards that nothing, but there is still hope that maybe Ryan Murphy can really show up and be that, you know, I guess not diamond in the rough, but steal of a 21st overall pick. Class dismissed.